Namaste. Welcome back. Thank you for being here with me. I'm Sally Raspberry. This is day two of Raising the Vibe with the Four Agreements and Beyond. Yesterday, we talked a lot about the, the Four Agreements. I talked a lot. <laughs> Today, let's introduce Mastery of Self, which is another book written by Don Miguel Ruiz. This one, the main point of this book, the main thing that I took from this book, and it has just propelled me from surviving to thriving. In Mastery of Self, there's the concept of these two voices that are inside our minds. There's the parasite and the ally. So the ally says things like, yeah, I can do this. And the parasite says, no, you can't. Or the allies like, you know what, I fell down, but I'm going to get up again. And the parasite says, you're an idiot. <laughs> That's the parasites inside my own head. So first, the mastery of self suggests that you find out what is the parasite in your mind telling you? What are some stories that the parasite has that you have about yourself that are not loving? You know, are, do you feel like you're not worthy? Do you feel like you're not smart enough? Do you feel like you're not cool enough? Do you feel like you're not brave enough? Do you feel like you're not strong enough? You're not good looking enough? You're not educated enough? Whatever it is, you don't have a good enough job or you need to prove something to someone. The parasite has all these lies that we believe because for a lot of us, it's easier to hear negative criticism than it is to hear a compliment. For many people, it's so much easier to hear, you suck, than, wow, you're really wonderful. So sit with that and see if that makes sense for you. There are some people who already know how to accept a compliment, who are worthy, who know they're worthy. We are all worthy, that's the secret. We're all worthy of love and affection and attention and admiration and respect. But some of us have this deep-seated self-worth issue that kind of feels like we have to explain ourselves, translate ourselves, constantly be proving to other people how smart we are, how good looking we are, how sweet we are, how X, Y, Z we are. And the truth is we don't have to do any of that. We deserve love and connection and respect simply because we exist and there's nothing we need to do to earn it. That being said, as long as you're doing your best, you're being impeccable with your word, you're not taking things personally, you're making no assumptions. If we're moving forward with that kind of, um, with that toolbox behind us, then it's, it's easier to get into harmony with what is sacred inside of us, with that Ananda Maya Kosha, remember? The part of the body that is the spirit. It's easier to do that and it's easier to listen to the other voice besides the parasite, which is the ally. That voice that says, you can do this, or I'm really excited about this, or yeah, you nailed that presentation, or man, you made a really good dinner tonight, or wow, you handled that confrontation with your children really well, or hey, that was a kind thing you just did for that person. The ally is the voice of reassurance, of unconditional positive regard that we hold for ourselves. And there, are, some of us, it's, um, it's underheard, it's underutilized. So what we wanna do today, today's work is going to be to quiet the parasite and to amplify the sound of the ally. I would like you to do an activity I want you to take a moment, take an hour. This part might take a week. Just do what you can in the day. Just do this a little bit at a time and you'll know how many times you need to repeat it. But write down, what are some old stories you have? Some stories that aren't true. Like I know for the longest time, I told myself that I wasn't as smart as my sisters or that after my car accident and brain injury, I was no longer smart. And I really held true to that. And because of it, I 
went back to school at 36 and <laughs> I enrolled in college and I just wanted to prove to everyone like, see, just because I didn't choose the collegiate path when I was 18, I chose to travel and open a business and then start a family. I really felt like I had this thing to prove like, no, I can go to college too, see? I sent my acceptance letter to like, to all of my sisters and my mom and my dad. And you know, I just wanted that good job, that pat on the back. But the thing is no one can give us that. Only you can give yourself the good job pat on the back. And that's the voice of the ally. We're gonna talk more about not making your um, happiness or your sense of self-worth be dependent on another human. We'll talk about that tomorrow when we enter the mastery of love. But today let's really focus on the dream that you're creating. This is your paintbrush. What dream are you creating for yourself to live in? We talked yesterday about the world, the dream of the planet, but you've got your own individual dream as well. And so what I'd really like you to do is think about your ally and your parasite and write down those old stories that you may have. Um, usually they're about not being enough of something or not having enough of something. Just write down those things that you would like to let go of and don't be afraid to go really deep. You know, I tell my yoga teacher training students, the more work you put in, the more work you're gonna get out of it. So if you're doing a chant, for example, and you don't really want to be heard and you're just trying to be quiet, you're going to you're gonna get that much out of it if you put that much into it. But if you inhale fully and open your diaphragm and let your chin drop down and you just let the om go, I sounded like a tuba on Family Guy. <laughs> But if you do that, if you put into it, then you get the benefit out of it that you sought. So first of all, I want to tell you, and then I want you to tell yourself, that you are deserving of everything your heart desires. You are deserving and worthy of love and respect, adoration, attention. You're worthy of it all. And you don't need accolades to prove it and you don't have to prove yourself to anyone for any reason because you are the total package. You are the ice cream. You are the cherry on top. Everything else in your life is just, you know, it, it adds to your life and, and that's wonderful, but you are your own dish. You, you don't need anything else from anyone else to complete you and you don't need additional degrees and you don't need additional things or additional money or additional any of that. But everything that you want, I want all of your dreams to come true. I'm making a wish for you now that you have the life that you want. Every single part of you feels free and connected and divine and just bathed in love. In order to get there, we've got to let go of these parasitic thoughts that we may have. So really dig deep. Remember to put in the work that you want to get out of it. So write down the things that are negative that you think about yourself. And then look at each one of them and think, is that true? And I'll tell you right now, the answer is no. None of those negative things that you're thinking about yourself are true. Have you made a huge mistake? Probably, if you're human. But people make mistakes. And forgiveness is something that can just saturate us with self-love so that we learn not to do the thing again. <laughs> but we move forward. Mark Nepo says, you hold on to the lesson you learned from the mistake, but you let go of the guilt from making the mistake. That's forgiveness. All right, so that's your assignment is to write down the parasitic things that you've been telling yourself that you've been believing. And then I want you to do one of two things with that piece of paper where you've written the things. I either want you to burn it safely in a fire pit or in a metal bowl. You can just light it on fire and keep it contained in the bowl. Burn it and watch it transmute into, into smoke and watch it transmute into ash. It has now become ether and earth 
You can put the ash, spread it in your garden, put it on the floor. You can step your bare foot in it for an added effect of the ritual. But you're just having a visual representation that that story's gone. Another thing you could do if you don't want to burn it, you can take a piece of paper. Paper is biodegradable. And you write these things on the paper. And then you're going to go out back and you're going to dig a hole with a little trowel. And you're going to bury the paper. And you're going to cover it up with dirt. And you're just going to let it be. You're going to have a burial for that part of you that thinks that negative thing about yourself. All the things that are no longer serving you, they can let go. They don't need to take up space. We want to open up and free up that space so that the ally can speak a little louder and be heard, be more clear, and be trusted. So once you've buried or burned those things that are no longer serving you anymore, those negative things the parasite tells you, then we're going to move over into the ally. And I want you to make a list. Just listen to the ally. Think about what's great about me? What is so great about me? What do I do really well? What are my strengths? What do I love about myself? Maybe there's even something I've never told anyone that I love about myself. Just begin to write those things down. And at first that list might be really short because some of us have uh, been raised in a way that might have prevented us from thinking that we are wonderful in any way. But you know that's not true. You know deep down that's not true. You're amazing, you're great. You're the cat's meow. Write it down, list everything. And then that which you're comfortable sharing, tape it up to your mirror. The things that are really private that you don't want anyone to see, stick it in a journal where you can open it when you want to. You can put it in your medicine bag which we'll talk about, I believe on day seven, but further in the journey, we'll talk about creating your medicine bag. You might wanna have some of these secret things you love about yourself written down on a paper in your medicine bag. So increase the voice of the ally and really decrease the voice, quiet the voice of that parasite. And also notice when you're out, you know, right, Right now when we're doing this activity, sure, it's easy to do. You've got the time to do it. You're sitting down, you're writing it, you're doing this ritual, you're listening, you're thinking about things you love about yourself. But what about when you're actually living? What about when you're driving to the grocery store? What about when any conflict arises at work or at home? Notice who, who stands up for you. Who's on your council? Does the parasite immediately go, yeah, you piece of crap, that's right. All these negative things you're hearing from that other person, that's true. Does that happen? And then what does the ally say? I want you to start training your ally to get stronger and be protective for you. Think of yourself in the way that you want to protect your own inner child or your own actual children, or your animals. Think of someone who's so easy to want to protect, someone so loving and sweet and wonderful. And just hold that image of yourself in your heart. That's you. You know, we're mirrors of each other, so if you see a child or an animal or any person that you just think, man, you're great. You're looking at a reflection of yourself too. You see parts of yourself in everyone. The same is true when we see someone that's irritating us. You're probably irritated by parts of them that remind you of yourself. But for these purposes, for today's purpose, we're gonna really focus on loving ourselves and standing up for ourselves and strengthening that ally's voice so that when you're out in public, driving around or you're at work and the parasite creeps in and says something really horrible about yourself to yourself, let the ally stand up and love the parasite. Wrap the parasite in, in arms, in a loving hug, and just say, I understand that you're scared, and there's a lot of things that you just don't understand. I get why I needed you to be so present at some points in my life. I needed to be mean and sharp, but you're not really needed here anymore. I don't need insults. I don't need injuries. I just need to think clearly and to be peaceful and you're not helping with that. 
start to notice. And the more you notice, the more you'll notice. You know it. What you practice, you get really good at. So, so far we've been practicing so long hearing this negative, just narrative running, running, running rampant in the mind. So we've gotten really good at it because we practiced it so much. It's time to change. It's time to let the ally get louder, get sweeter, and come get your back. Come get your own back. Extend that unconditional love to yourself. When you notice the parasite wah, 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 about you, just let your ally step in and say, that's not true. I hear my, app, my parasite talking and I forgive my parasite and whoosh, just flood yourself with the love of forgiveness. It's so simple. It's not easy, but now you've got the practice and I'd like you to work with it. So that's your homework today. Make the parasite list, make the ally list. Put the ally list somewhere you can see it later or every day in the mirror. Burn the parasite list or bury it in the ground. Give it a funeral. Namaste. See you for the next step.